uh, today we are going to uh, continue with our lesson in optics and uh, we will be doing some calculations involving mirrors. But before that, we will be doing some review about mirrors. So last time we had a discussion on plane mirrors and curved mirrors. Now uh, let's make uh, some uh, short game okay, as part of our review for the lesson okay, on mirror. Okay, so remember last time we discussed about the image formed by a plane mirror. Now this is the instruction. Okay, if you think the statement I say is true, you will remain seated and raise your right hand. If you think it's true. But if you think the statement I, I gave is false, then you will stand without raising any of your hand. Is that clear? Yeah. Example, let's say the, the statement I gave is False. Oh, what's your answer? What's your response? Okay, that's correct. Okay, uh, please be seated. Let's say the statement I gave is true. What will you do? Okay, good. Okay, uh, let's try, huh? The image formed by a plain mirror is real. from the mirror is the same as the distance of the object from the mirror. What mirror? Plane. Where is the plane mirror? Okay, that's correct. Because the answer is true. Okay? Next. Uh, the image form of a plane mirror is flipped vertically. Okay, that's correct. Because the answer is false. It should be flipped in what way? Okay, next. Uh, the image formed by a plane mirror uh, has same appearance with the object. Okay, very good guys. Okay, let's see. So, we have the following characteristics. Everybody please read. The image formed by a plane mirror are... Okay, first.
All right. And then count the images and report. And finally, open it to 30 degrees. Okay, so count the number of images in both mirrors and record. Okay, so thank you so much guys. Let's see if you got it correctly. Uh, open the two mirrors according to the angle that will be flashing here and then count the number of images and record the number of images that you see in the mirrors. Okay, so the first is 90 degrees, second 60 degrees, third 40 degrees, and the last is 30 degrees. Do it now. source as it strikes the mirror they reflect in a parallel way for, uh, because the angle of incidence is equal to the angle of uh, reflection now let's try if it's a concave mirror okay can see please put the all right move it away slightly away okay uh, for, for concave mirror do you see point of intersection of the reflected rays yes. yes okay what do you call that point of intersection so it must be here at the focus 
I'm sorry? Active, active focus. focus. Active focus. Or uh, what other term do we use? Is it real or virtual? Okay, it's a real focus because that focus is formed in front of the mirror. mirror. Okay, let's try the convex. Okay, what happened to the light ray for convex mirror? It's the reflected rays are what? Uh, okay, yes, they are diverge, okay, or spreading out, okay, because of the shape of our mirror. Okay, so thank you so much, guys. Please turn on the light again and switch off our. Okay, so uh, it's now your turn to do the activity. So I, uh, I want some to get the boxes there and uh, bring to your uh, corresponding table or designated area. Okay, so please get it now. Okay, open the kit and bring out the materials. Only the materials that you saw from the demonstration your classmates did a while Okay, so open the, the kids, open the box. Okay. Okay, open, open the kit and prepare the materials. Then 
parallel to the principal axis. And wherever the intersections of the two reflected rays, that will be uh, the head of the image, and the body will be touching the principal axis. So this is now our ray diagram. Now, in order to find congruent triangles here, because if you will notice, there are triangles formed in this diagram. So we need to plot or uh, to assign name for each point that we will be forming. So what are those points? We have point here. Okay, we also have here at the head, at the mirror. Okay, at the lower part of the mirror, at the head of the image, and at the tail of the image. By the way, this is our image. Okay, so what points or names of points that you want to assign? For example, but you already have V, F, and C, where V stands for what? Vertex. Vertex. F is? Focus. Focus. And C is? The center of curvature. Okay? So what name for this point would you like to assign? Point A. Okay? We can use A for this. How about here? B. Okay, let's use B. How about in this point? B. Point E, because we already have... Ah, wait, E? A D, okay, because we already have C here. Okay, next, what point, what, what name you want to assign for this? E. Okay, point E. How about here, because we already have here point F. So how about here? G. 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 And in here? H. 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 Okay, can you tell me which triangles here you think are congruent? Okay, anyone? Or... Anybody who can tell which triangles here are said to be congruent? Give one pair of triangle first. A, B, F. Okay, we have triangle A, B, F. And? F, G, H. F, G, H. F, F, G, H. So you s are you saying that they are congruent? Oh, so which else? F, G, H. F, B, and E. Okay, let's see. So it's congruent to triangle, uh, let's say, V, F, E, or uh, B, F, E. How do you say that these two triangles are congruent? Now, in order for us to say that uh, triangles are congruent, we can uh, consider them congruent if their interior angles are the same. So, do you think these two triangles have same interior angles? Yes. Okay. Which angles do you think are the same? Okay. Would you consider these two equal or the same? Yes. And why? Opposite. They are opposite angles, yes. Okay. How about this? Would you consider this equal? Yes. Yes, it's because they are both? Right, 90 degrees. Right angles or 90 degrees. Okay. So that means these two angles are congruent. Now, uh, we are going to uh, show ratios okay, for each length of the two triangles so that we can be able to equate those, those ratios. Okay, let's have the ratio between uh, the, this length, the vertical length, and the horizontal length. So the vertical length is uh, line what? AB. Okay, so we have line AB, and then uh, we can say that AB per, what's the whole horizontal? AF. AF. Okay, can we say that this is equal to, okay, we have the vertical here, which is what? VE. And Y negative. Okay, yes, because the direction is going down. Okay, so it's negative over, what's the horizontal? F. Okay, F, B. Do you think they are equal? Yes. Yes, because? Uh, they are congruent. Because they are from congruent triangles. Okay, next. Uh, we have a line B, D, or D, B. Okay, and we have... Uh, uh, we have uh, AF and then can we say that AF is BD minus FB? Yes. Can we say that uh, the length AF is the BD 
minus FB. Yes. Yes. So let's write here. So we have AB over. Okay, AF is what? BD minus. FB. Okay, FB. And that is equal to negative BD over FB. Okay, then we're going to assign the uh, quantities that will represent these segments. Okay, for AB, what do you think represents AB? Yes. Oh, okay, it's the size of the object. How about uh, how about BD? What do you think is BD? DO. Okay, DO or distance of the object from the mirror. Yes. Okay. Next, uh, how about FB? What do you think is FB? Okay, that's the focal length. Okay, uh, let's write here, huh? So we say that AB is SO, uh, BD is DO, and then FV is the focal length. Okay, do we have some more? How about VE? What do you think is VE? Is it the same distance as this? Or the same length? Yes. And what do you think is this? Okay, that's our SI, or size of the image. Okay, now let's substitute this in here. So again, AB is SO over DO minus minus F is equal to negative. Okay, VE is SI over over F. Okay, can you follow? Yeah. Okay, and then we cross multiply this. So we can just flip SO and F. So that it will become F over DO minus F is equal to negative SI over SO. SO. And we will call this our uh, first equation. Okay. Next. Do you see another triangle or a congruent triangles in this diagram? Yes. Okay. Which else is con uh, are congruent? Okay, we have F, G, H, what else? F, V, D. And F, V, D. Okay, how do you say that these two triangles are congruent? Let's, let's write it here. We have angle F, G, H. You say that it's congruent to angle, or sorry, not angle, it should be triangle. Okay, triangle, uh, which one? F, V, D. How do you say that? Uh, they are congruent. Uh, both have right angles. Okay, both of them have right angles and they have opposite angles. Okay, is that understood? Yeah. Okay, now if they are congruent, let's uh, compare the ratios of their dimensions. So let's start with the vertical for this triangle. What, what is that length? How do we name? G. GH over, okay, what is its uh, horizontal length? FH is equal to, okay, what's the vertical length, oh sorry, of this triangle? DB. And why should it be negative? Oh, the HG is negative. So it's the HG that is negative, okay? This one should be the one to be negative, okay? Because HG, the direction is going down, okay? And DB per, okay, what's the horizontal of that length? VF, okay, or FV. Okay, um, take a look at this. We have GE. Can we say that HF is GE minus FV? Yes. 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 So let's uh, substitute here. GH over, again, FH is GE G -E minus FV. Minus FV. And that is equal to dv over fv. Can you follow? Yes. Okay, next. Now take a look at uh, hg. What do you think is this? Uh, what do you think is the quantity that will represent hg? Where are the images found? What do you think is that quantity? It's the s i or size of the image. Okay, so we're going to assign quantities that will represent this. So again, uh, this length will be SI or size of the image because that's the size of the image form in our diagram. And then, uh, what length is this? GE. What is GE? The 
Okay, uh, let's write here HG or GH is SI and then GE is DI, yes, it's the distance of the image from the mirror. Okay, next, how about DV? What do you think is DV? Is it the same length as AB? Yes. And what does it represent? SO. Okay, so DV is our size of the object. And what is FV again? Okay, FV is our focal length. Okay, and it's in here already. Okay, let's substitute here. So we have negative GH, which is SI over GE is DI minus. Okay, minus F equals DV is SO over FV is. Okay, is F. Okay, then let's do cross multiplication. Okay, we can flip this as we cross multiply. So it will be negative SI over SO equals multiplied in there it will be di minus f over f and we will call this our second equation okay what will be the next we form negative si over so in both equations and they are just the same right so can we say that f over d minus f is also equal to di minus f over f yeah okay let's write it in here so, equating the two equations, okay, the two equations, so we have, uh, for this equation, we have F over DO minus F equals, for this equation, we have DI, DI minus F over F. F. What do we do next? Cross multiply. Cross multiply. So, F times F. F squared is equal to what is DO minus F times DI minus F? DO DI minus minus DOF. What what's next? Minus DIF plus F squared. Okay, that's correct. Okay, then we have to simplify this. So we have f squared is equal to, oh, by the way, oh. we have something to cancel. f squared. Okay, f squared can be cancelled. Okay, so this becomes zero. And then we have d o d i. Okay, we can factor out f. negative f. Can you follow? Yes. If we factor out negative f, what would be left? d o plus d i. It will be d o plus d i. Can we transpose this term here? Yeah. So it will become what? F, F, D F o times DO plus DI equals DO DI. And then divide both sides by DO plus DI so that we can, we can cancel the quantity DO plus DI. What will be left in this side of the equation? F is equal to DODI over DO plus DI. Now let's call this part our equation 3. Okay, next. But we are going to continue uh, simplifying equation 3 by getting the reciprocal of both sides. What's the reciprocal of F? 1 over F. 1 over F. Equals the reciprocal, uh, reciprocal of this is DO plus DI, DO plus DI over DO DI. Now we distribute this denominator to these terms, so it will be 1 over F equals DO over DO DI plus DI over DO DI. Now what will be cancelled? DO plus oh, in, in this term we cancel DO, what will be left? 1 over DI one 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 plus, one what will be cancelled here? DI will be cancelled and what will be left? 1 over DO. 1 over DO. And we can just flip this so that the equation will be 1 over F equals 1 over DO plus 1 over DI. And this is our first equation for zero. Is that understood? Okay, so this time we're going to uh, derive the fourth equation. Okay, remember the fourth equation is uh, SI over SO equals negative DI, DI over D. 
DO. Okay, so how do we derive that? You can choose from equations 1 and 2. Which do you prefer? Better you choose the one with SI over SO. Do both of them have? So which one do you prefer? The equation 2. Okay, you prefer equation 2. So let's uh, use equation 2. Wherein we have negative SI over SO equals DI minus F over F. Okay, next. Uh, we have F here. So what we do is we substitute equation 3 to F. Uh, what is our equation 3? A while ago. So and that F is DODI over DO plus DI. So let's substitute them here. So then we have negative SI over SO equals DI minus the quantity of DO DI over DO plus DI all over, okay, what is F again? DO DI over DO plus DI. Okay, so we have negative SI over SO equals, okay, we have DI minus, oh no, we can get the LCD of uh, this, remember this has over 1. So we get the LCD of 1 and DO plus DI, so what's the LCD? Okay, the LCD is DO plus DI, and DO plus DI divided by 1 is one. still the same times this, times di, what will be the result? di, 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 o, di, di plus di squared plus di squared minus okay, minus, di. okay, di plus di divided by this 1, one, one times di, o, di, di is di, o, di. di what will be cancelled out there? di, o, di di, o, di will be cancelled here next, it's over D O D I over D O plus D I. What else will be cancelled? D O plus D I. D O plus D I is cancelled. Okay, so we have negative S I over S O equals what is left here? D I squared. D I squared over D O D I. And then what will be cancelled out? Okay, D I and one of the D I's here will be cancelled. So what we left here is negative S I over S O equals. Okay, di over do and if we multiply both sides by negative one so it will be si over, SI over so equals di over do okay and this is how we got the fourth equation where if we separate them it will be taking the magnification all right is that then let's proceed to problem solving in, uh, using the mirror equations okay so let's uh, take this as an example everybody please read Ready again? Uh, a 3 centimeter object is placed 15 centimeters from a convex mirror. If it has a focal length of 10 centimeters, how far is the image from the mirror? What kind of image is formed? What is the size of the image? What is the position of the image? Okay, so let me show you how to calculate this. centimeters. 
speakers. Okay, so please check if they got it correctly. See if they have solution, give a point for the solution. Okay, next. For letter B, the answer is the focal length equals 11.5 centimeters. Okay, so also a point for the solution, if they show the solution. And letter C, the answer is concave mirror because the focal length is a positive integer. Okay? Alright, so count the score, okay, write it or record it and then uh, bring back the total to the owner. Okay, now let's see uh, your score. Alright. So, uh, who got five? Raise your hand. Okay. Alright, very good. Who got four? Okay, uh, not bad. Who got three? Okay, uh, so please review well the mirror equations now. Huh? Okay, how about two? No one, okay. One, zero. Alright, so everybody, let's give yourself 10 claps. Ready, begin. Okay, so for your assignment, just uh, read the, or have advanced reading on our uh, topics on uh, refraction of light, and then we will be having discussion of this uh, in our next meeting. Okay, so that's all for today. Goodbye, class. Bye.